Douglas, welcome back to Real Vision. Ash, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, and I'm excited again to talk about some of the things that you're working on, uh, because I think it's so interesting. Uh, it's, a, it's a bridge between the traditional world uh, of securities trading uh, and cryptocurrency and digital assets. And I want our audience to really understand what you guys are doing and why it's significant. You know, what, what INEX is doing is we always thought that the way that the legacy equity world was, was uh, set up is uh, sort of in the Stone Age. In the Stone Age, in that you can't do self-custody. They only trade between you know 9.30 in the morning and what, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And you can't do fractionalized ownership. And, and the one thing that we've seen through Bitcoin and, and blockchain use is that you can do all of these things now if you go digital with securities. And so what we wanted to do was sort of point to the NASDAQs of the world and the New York Stock Exchanges of the world and say, you know what, you guys are using an old model. It's almost like they're blacksmiths, they're making shoes, but now everyone's driving cars. And given that, you know, the world always appreciates things that remove friction. And I think that, you know, what the blockchain does when it comes down to digital securities is it removes so many middlemen and so much friction, and yet makes things so much uh, open to, to investors. You know, if you're abroad and you want to invest in Nike, maybe you've got to be awake between the US hours of 9.30 and four o'clock in the afternoon. That doesn't make sense. Let's say you're in India and uh, you can't afford the average price of a US share, so you can't buy one. So you can't ever participate in the equity markets in the US. That doesn't work. But let's say you could have something, you could have an exchange that allows you to trade specific types of securities. Now they're called security tokens, which is a bit of a tongue twister, I think, because really it's just digital assets, digital securities that can trade 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you don't have to worry about the exchange turning around to, to you and saying, hey, you know what, little guy, we don't like you selling today or we don't like you buying because you can self-custody. You can take them off yourself. And if, if you remember the Reddit discussion with GameStop, everyone was astounded that, that they were being told by their by the, you know, the folks that were trying to do the trades with like E-Trade or others that, that they couldn't sell anymore or they couldn't buy anymore. Who does that? Who can even say that? And so self-custody allows you, if someone says, you know what, you can't do this? Well, you can take it off of that exchange and go trade it somewhere else. And what I next also thought was, you know, digital securities and security tokens existed before we came along, but they were really just for wealthy investors or what, you know, what we call accredited investors. And folks always said, well, wait a minute, Security tokens, there's no liquidity in those. Well, of course there wasn't, because every exchange that was open, maybe only had 10 or 15,000 people signed up to trade on them. And they were all accredited investors. And all of the issues that were listed were sort of like, you know, in real estate or, or, or something of that nature that doesn't trade that much in general. And so they were looked at as being, look, this is a sleepy backwater and it's, not, nev it's never going to take off. And our view is, well, if Nike wants to move on to the blockchain or Amazon, you have to make sure that retail can buy into things from day one, that you can't have lockup periods. It can't just be for the guys that are members of country clubs. And so we went to the SEC and said, look, we want to create a digital security token that retail can buy from day one, that there's no lockup periods, and uh, you know, gives, gives people protection. And protection in which way? Well, you know, if you have Bitcoin and it's on your Trezor wallet, and you have a boating accident, you've lost your Bitcoin, but you can't have the retail investor lose their securities. And so what we had to do is set up, you know, through the smart contract, a way where we have a white listing of wallets. So we always know who owns our security at any time. And if they lose it, they can call us and say, hey, guys, you know, we, we lost our INEX tokens. And we can say, that's no problem. But here they are. We'll just replace them and the old wallet, they're gone. And that's because we have provenance of who owned our securities all through the process. I can tell you at any time who owns an INEX security and they can't sell it from their wallet and give it to someone else unless the other person had also gone through the whitelisting process. Now to regulators, that's huge because today there's a lot of money laundering that happens in equity markets. For example, Ash, I could give you Nike stock. You could sell it, you get the money. Nike doesn't know, the government doesn't know and that's money laundering. But with an INEX security, the issuer INEX knows and the government could know if they wanted to come in and subpoena you. And so these are all sort of new things that are happening in the space of digital securities, but it cuts out so many people as well because every time a trade is done, it registers on the blockchain. And there's this huge database up in the, in the cloud that says, look, this person owned this, pass it to this person, pass it to that person, and you can see. 
And so having all of this sort of um, transparency is very, very important because folks want to know, you know, what exactly is happening in equity world or in digital securities world. And digital securities allow them to have that transparency. Let's say right now you've got a hedge fund that's slowly acquiring a position up to 5% or 6% in a company. And right now, I think they have to self-report that. But when it's on the blockchain, the issuer could actually see it in lifetime because they'll see the Ethereum wallets are, you know, the liquid wallet, whatever it is, acquiring these security tokens in lifetime. So it sort of changes the whole game in terms of how securities are traded. Now, it's not just me that thinks that things are going to move on the blockchain. The SEC's chairman, Clayton, a couple of weeks before he left office and at a speech in Philadelphia, turned around and said, hey, guys, I can see all assets moving onto the blockchain. And I think that that's you know, really key there in that the SEC of folks always say, look, they're, they're against digital, they're against movement. But obviously, they're not. They allowed us to go through the first ever IPO in the blockchain, the first ever public security to IPO in the blockchain. And at the same time, they've already talked about how they want all assets to move onto the blockchain. So there's going to be tremendous uh, changes. Now, going back to liquidity, in order to get liquidity in security tokens, you've got to do two things. You've got to, one, have a lot more assets that are listed so folks are interested. But right. two, you've got to have a much larger audience. And so our view was, well, look, let's set up a crypto trading platform. Folks can come in, buy Bitcoin and Ethereum. I mean, you're right. This is a huge space right now. Right? You get Coinbase in the US, Gemini, uh, Kraken. These are all big companies with huge amounts of folks. But if you think of them as restaurants, they're restaurants that right now are overflowing, filled to capacity, and the chefs are going crazy because there's so many orders. I'm sure you've seen when Bitcoin makes a new high or dips down lower that the servers are down. Or there's a, a text that comes out saying, hey, guys, sorry, we can't onboard right now. We have to take a little bit of a break. And what we're doing is we're opening up a restaurant on the same block. And we're hoping that you know, through service, customer service, and the ability to onboard folks, and also servers that aren't right now overloaded, we'll be able to attract some of these folks that are trading elsewhere. Or you know, just, just the new person that comes along and says, you know what, I want to trade in the United States in a US uh, place. But once they come in the door to trade crypto, I can say, hey, why don't you click on this tab and we'll introduce you to all the security tokens that we're also listing. And so now we're bringing an audience of you know, potentially millions of people to an asset class that right now only has tens of thousands of people looking at it. And that's going to be the big change because no company is going to move off of NASDAQ and list on INEX if I can't say I've got millions and millions of people that are able to buy your security. I mean, it's a pipe dream. And so I think that what we'll end up doing first is taking smaller private companies and you know, tokenizing them and listing them on our platform. And then we'll take smaller private uh, public companies, maybe on the OTC, that want more attention. And we'll be able to give them the attention when we list them on our, on our platform as well. And then over time, the next couple of years, you'll find guys on NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange start to dip their toes, not because necessarily they want to, but because the regulators will start pushing them hard. Right. And they'll maybe take a 10% flow. You know all these stock buybacks we hear about all the time? They'll buy back some stock, they'll put it in a trust, and then they'll have the trust trading in digital format on the blockchain at somewhere like ourselves. And I think that that's how you're going to see this great migration. You'll see it first coming from the OTC onto the blockchain. Then you'll start having you know, New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ companies dipping their toes into the blockchain. Now, your next question probably is, well, why wouldn't the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ do that today? And the reality is, I asked this question. I said, hey, guys, we'd like to list the INX token with you. And they said, no, not for a couple of years. Not for a couple of years. And I said, well, why, why can that be? And I think that the reality is that New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ are, it's sort of like there's two storefronts, but there's only one kitchen. And that kitchen is the DTCC. And in the DTCC, Bob Cratchit sits there and he writes, Morgan Stanley sold shares to Goldman Sachs. And all of these pipes that everyone talks about that the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ has, all these pipes going out to all of the different um, brokers, the Morgan Stanley's, the Goldman's, the brokers all around the world. None of this is digital. None of it's on the blockchain. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.